Hi everyone. As someone who's been tracking his mood for thousands of days using the Dailyo app, I'm thrilled to announce to you that there is a better alternative. If you're new here, I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who holds a master's degree in statistics. The How We Feel app is honestly a better alternative to Dailyo. I was grandfathered then to Dailyo and now they charge a bunch of money. So I, I didn't have to pay, I could just pay the one-time fee. But for new users, I have a hard time justifying the $10 price points. So I started uh, looking for other alternatives. And as part of my research on em emotions, after reading Lisa Feldman Barrett's How Emotions Are Made, all the links and timestamps will be in the description below. Um, I stumble onto Mark Brackett, who works, I believe it's Stanford, it might be Harvard, it's one of those uh, big fan fancy schools, but he's a... Uh, an emotion researcher and he wrote a book and as part of the book the the project was to design an app and this app was designed by pinterest founder ben silverman so the ui and human experience user experience is very very good so i'll just walk you through the app here uh, this is the home screen and i'll walk you through a check-in so essentially you just click check-in and then you have the four quadrants and these four quadrants are based on something called the mood meter. And again, I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen. I bought a PNG on Etsy. Again, all the links will be in the description below. And I have it in front of my class. So when students walk in and I see that they might be tired or something like that, I ask them where they are on the mood meter uh, poster. And I do that for myself and in this, um, activity or exercise, I should say, has been shown to increase your emotional granularity, which has been shown to actually increase your mood and uh, positive affect. So here we have four quadrants. From left to right, it's your how positive you are. So if you're on the right, that means you're pleasant. If you're on the left, that means you're unpleasant. From top to bottom, that's your energy. If you're feeling low, that means you're depressed. And if you're feeling high, that means you're elated or super angry and these kinds of things. So right now, I would say I'm high energy pleasant. I'm engaged. So here you see all the words and we'll talk about that later. So it's a each quadrant is a six by six grid. So right now it's I'm pretty high energy and um, maybe excited. I'm, I'm positive, but I'm not super positive. So I'm probably like one or two. Uh, valence wise on the right so enthusiastic successful maybe let's go with successful because I'm I'm feeling like I'm uh, doing a good job making this video and then let's just go back here for a second you can tag a bunch of activities so I don't do that myself because uh, I, I track my activities in daily regardless I still do use both apps and we'll talk about that later as well but I you, I encourage you to tag, right? If you only use one app, definitely tag. There's also options at the top right that you can edit and add another emotion as well. But I'll just do it next and then describe uh, what might be causing you to feel successful. You can add a picture. So I'll just write uh, something, video, record. And uh, obviously you don't need to do this. I don't do this un unless there's something very specific there you can edit the time but i don't and then you can input your sleep so for example how much i slept i slept six hours and uh, 15 minutes last night let's say update sleep and then how much did i exercise and then it tracks the weather automatically so that's a really really nice feature and i wish delio did the same thing because i analyze my mood uh, the effect of weather on mood and we'll, we'll talk about that soon as well okay so that was a check-in and the, an another nice thing is that you can share your check-in on social media but also with your friends so there's a community aspect to it and that's also been shown to help with emotions that normalizes them and people can even reach out if they see like oh uh, olivia's been depressed for five days maybe i should reach out right so that's really cool i don't personally share my mood but it's a, it's a nice feature and some people it's a definitely a game changer next we're just gonna hop into the settings because i want to show you a, a couple cool things here so first we'll go into notifications and i add four daily reminders one at 8 15 a.m 8 17 p.m 
5.30 p.m. and 12.45 p.m. You can add more reminders as well. And my friend's notifications are on. Um, and that, that's about it. But the uh, reminders features is really cool. The fact that you can have more than one of them and four per day. And obviously, I'm not all, always on my phone. So it's not exactly at those times. But that's kind of nice as well. And some other thing would be to have random reminders. That would be a nice additional feature that they might add later on. What I love about the how we feel app is that it is based on research, right? So uh, you can be part of a demographic survey and they keep track of your data to make a bunch of correlations. So that's really cool. And as part of that is that they let you export your data. So super easily, you just click on download my data, sends as an Excel file and I analyze my data in R to uh, correlate that with my Fitbit daily uh, data, for example, or my daily data, see if my daily mood matches my how we feel mood. And if not, why not these kinds of questions, right? So that's really cool. And honestly, nowadays, I think there's a ethical obligation to share the data that you collect on people. Another reason why the how we feel app is superior to daily is that there's a learn tab at the bottom. And there's a bunch of videos. I've probably watched a dozen of them and there, there's a exercises and some of them are more infor informational. Uh, others are more exercises that they walk you through it. They're a couple minutes long, right? So celebrate their win. And basically, let's say you have a strong um, instance of affect. That's another word for emotion then they might suggest you a specific video using AI and just their algorithms on what works best, right? It might just be a simple if then statement, but there's a bunch of things. There's move your body, there's reaching out to people, there's self care, and there's a bunch of exercises and it's, it's really high quality and it's, it's nice that it's all free, high quality. And not only are you tracking your mood, but the act, of tracking it helps you regulate your mood, but then they also give you other tools to regulate your mood, which ultimately is kind of the, the whole point of this is one to gain self awareness, but two to regulate your affect, right? Next, let's just dive into the, uh, the stats. So they, their visuals could use some work and ideally I couldn't help them <laughs> make that happen. And I'll show you in a, a couple examples of good visuals that I created by exporting my data and analyzing it in R. So this visualization is pretty cool. It's kind of a bar chart, but it just tells you the proportion of uh, check-ins that are in each quadrant. What's um, not ideal with this, for example, is that when you're at the center of quadrant four, that's way closer to being at the center of quadrant three, for example, um, like not all, not all the squares in the quadrants are homogeneous, right? That's another way of saying it. But generally speaking, you get the trend that I'm more on the positive side. So the blue is when you're feeling low energy and unpleasant. Red is high energy, unpleasant. Red is, uh, sorry, green is high energy, not low energy, pleasant. And yellow is high energy, pleasant. So most of the time, 38 plus 28, that is 66%. Uh, so about two thirds of my check-ins are on the positive side, sometimes low energy, sometimes high energy. I'm, I tend to check in at uh, lower energy than high energy. And I'm, that makes sense. I'm a generally chill guy. I'm not bouncing off the walls and I'm generally a positive guy as well. So that confirms my uh, intuition. Uh, this, this visualization is not very useful, but when you click on it, you can analyze all your check-ins on all the emotions felt. And just a little caveat here that when you check in, it's not necessarily an emotion, right? It's just an affective state on the X, Y plane. So where are you on the X, Y plane? And then you don't always feel that emotion. So that's how I think about it. And I actually wish that they would change the design of the app. So step one, press your location on the X, Y plane, just based on uh, energy and valence, how positive you feel. And then step two is choose an emotion word. And then that would like, uh, advance their research. Okay. This visualization is actually pretty cool. Um, focused is the check-in I do the most often. I basically, every time I'm at work, I rate, um, like not, not at work, but after I'm doing some work, 
focus work, deep work, if you <laughs> listen to Cal Newport, but it's positive and high energy. And then this honestly is the coolest one. According to me, it's your proportion of quadrants per time of day. And that's super cool, right? You can see that um, I'm always kind of the same baseline of quadrant red, which is high energy, unpleasant. But then I, it's really the green and yellow that change. So in the morning, I tend to do more deep work. And again, that, that matches with my, my schedule. And at night, I tend to be more chill, mellow, carefree, sympathetic, socializing with people. So it's more low energy, pleasant, right? So that, that's a really cool visualization. Uh, you also see it by days of the week. You see that on weekends, there seems to be a, a, a slight difference here. That's, that's interesting, right? And there's ways to uh, better this, these visualization and data. Here, I don't track my activities, so it's kind of useless. Again, same thing here, uh, who you, you were with, where were you? So it's location, people, and activities. So that's, that's interesting if you track your, your stats. I don't track my sleep, but that's interesting as well. I don't track my exercise, that's interesting. And the weather visualization is not great, but it's still cool, right? And I actually analyzed the weather stats, so we'll just hop into the visualizations I did in R. When you export your data in Excel and then analyze it using another software, you can create cooler visualization, more inf informative visualization. So here on the x-axis, you see the weather. So sometimes it's clear skies, cl clouds, rain, snow, other and not, not available. And then the valence is how positive you felt. So if you're below zero, that means you were negative. If you're above zero, that, that means you're positive. And six, that means you were at the far right. The red, I call them TIE fighters because it kind of looks like the, the starship in Star Wars, right? And it's just the average of all of this and the standard deviation. So you see that there's not major different, like there's there's no clear and big difference. My valence is always in like in the slight negatives. It, it's kind of surprising actually that the clear sky is lower than other and maybe other, like the, the data is kind of messy, right? Because what is weather and that weather doesn't fit in nice little neat categories, but you can still get a general idea and intuitively, the mood is not super, uh, my mood anyways, is not super dependent on weather and most people it's the same. It has a small effect, but that effect, it takes time to uh, tease out and let's say it's not nice out, but uh, you're, you're with friends, well, that has a better, bigger uh, impact on your mood. And again, I think this is a better alternative to the four quadrants plot with the four circles because you really see where you were most of the time. And you see that the light colored squares means that the, the frequency was higher and the dark colored or no color square, that means that the frequency was really low. So most of the time I'm on the right, which confirms everything we've been saying so far. And most of the time I'm also in the middle, which makes sense. Like, again, you're not bouncing off the walls or depressed. Most of the time you're hovering around the middle and then Sometimes you hover on higher, more extreme affective states. So that makes sense intuitively. Okay, so one last plot here. This is my personal favorite. And on one chart, you have a whole lot of information. So let's break it down. On the x-axis, you have the time of the day. 24 hours is midnight, 6 is 6 a.m. And on the y-axis, you have the rating from negative 6 to 6, uh, 6 being the highest, right? And then in blue, you have valence, so that's positive, negative. And then in red, you have arousal, so that's energy levels. So you see that as we progress from morning to night, what happens? We have higher energy, and it dips, generally speaking, to lower energy. Valence is kind of the opposite. You start at lower-ish energy, it dips through in the afternoon around 3, 4, and then it goes back up at the end. And obviously this might be due to events at the tails because I don't track that often at 11 p.m. But uh, it's still informative. And you see that there's kind of four uh, rect rectangles, one at eight something, one at 12 something, one at uh, 18 and 21, 
Well, those are the times that I tend to track my moods. Again, that's kind of cool to know, right? There's kind of four vertical lines. And then on the right, you have two density histograms. So you see that most, like there's more negative arousal, like I'm low energy more than I'm high energy. That's the higher camel bump is on the low end in red. And in blue, we have actually higher camel bump in the positive. So I tend to be more positive valence, but generally lower energy. I'm a chill guy who's generally positive. And again, that confirms uh, what we've thought so far. And just one last note, now that AI is getting really advanced and is able to analyze data, this is nice that I'm able to code this, And but most people can't do that. And that, that's understandable. It's, it's hard and even there's things I want to do that I can't do because of little bugs in the software and so on. But tracking your data nowadays has never been more useful because you'll soon be able to and already are able to ask uh, generative AI like ChatGPT and so on to write up some code to analyze data or straight up analyze the data for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and honestly all the links will be in the description below. I strongly recommend uh, starting tracking your mood. It, it increases self-awareness but also self-regulation. As always, thank you for watching and thank you for doing the work. Mm -hmm.